Hey, it's Annie Grace. I hope everybody is doing really good. Um, so I have a reader's question today that I'm really excited to answer. And if you are in a position where you are very curious about your drinking, I highly encourage you to check out the absolutely free alcohol experiment at alcoholexperiment.com. Um, because no matter where you are, if you're just drinking on occasion or drinking far too much, like I was, it can give you the gift of changing the entire conversation internally. So check that out. And I really wanted to get into this very specific question, which is so relevant for this conversation. So the question is, have I done permanent damage to my brain with my past drinking behavior? I've been alcohol free for three months now, but I can't help thinking about how awful I was to my body in my binge drinking days and wondering what the long-term consequences will be on my mental capacity. So First of all, I will caveat all this to say that I am not a neurosurgeon or a medical doctor or even a PhD or anything like that. So I don't, I can't tell you definitively. I don't know that they could either. Um, but what I do know, and from the research that I have done, is the brain is incredibly uh, malleable. It is, its capacity to heal is unparalleled. There has been research by Dr. Caroline Leaf and other scientists that actually show that we can change the structure of the brain with our thinking and our thoughts. There's also been research done to show that some of the areas that are damaged by the brain, one of the main areas that is damaged when, or sorry, not by the brain, one of the main areas that is damaged when we're drinking too much or in any type of addictive behavior is the prefrontal cortex. And the prefrontal cortex is not only damaged in the moment, so it is impaired, I would say more than damaged in the moment, the prefrontal cortex governs your ability to make good decisions. So as you can imagine, when you're three drinks in, four drinks in, you don't make as good of a decision as you did when you were stone cold sober. We know this is true. This is because of the impact that drinking has on the prefrontal cortex. Now, in addition to this, over time, one of the main areas of the brain that can get damaged through excessive drinking is the prefrontal cortex, and that can absolutely heal. There have been many studies showing that actually meditation further heals and grows the prefrontal cortex. So the prefrontal cortex, if you think of the three parts of our brain, you could think of it very basically as we've got like the lizard brain, the reptilian brain, and that's the part that actually the addiction really takes seat in. That's where um, our survival brain and addiction in general, when we become doing something we no longer want to be doing, and I'm going to define addiction as that, it takes seat in that part of the brain because the brain learns, oh, I need this thing to survive. That's what happens at its most basic level. And so we've got that lizard brain aspect. And then we've got like the mammalian brain, which is kind of the midbrain. And um, that's a lot where emotions come from and things like that. So your desires. And so there's a lot of thinking that goes on in that part of the brain. Like, oh, this is good. This is relaxing. This is good. And, and we create these desires. And then you've got the prefrontal cortex, which is really the human part of the brain. And this is the part of the brain that looks out for your best self and that of those around you, you know, that can hold compassion, that can understand delayed gratification, that can understand that you might want to make a decision now to do something that's a little bit more difficult, like say no to a drink for a dis outcome later and can delay that outcome. And that is the part of the brain, as you can imagine, that is most severely damaged by alcohol and it heals and it can grow stronger. And so all of the aspects of the brain really, truly can heal. And I think that even if I was completely wrong, I would argue that the, uh, first of all, I'm, I don't think I am wrong. I've done a lot of research to show that their brain is very malleable. It very much does heal. There are very few instances of drinking that have actually permanently damaged the brain. There are some, but there are very few, and it's usually drinking for 50, 60 years excessively daily and at very end states of this spectrum. So I would say, put that to ease. But I would also say that imagine, like, I, I guess I'm asking the bigger question, like, what does this worry give you? Because usually when we're worried about something, it's giving us something, whether it's a distraction or an escape or a, a form of blame, a form of, um, you know, trying to keep us on the straight and narrow and just explore the worry itself. Because what if I was wrong? What if I was totally wrong? And, and you have done some damage to your brain and you're never going to, I don't know, do something the exact same way again. And things have changed again. That's not true. None of that is true. But what if it was true? What good would it do 
to continue to worry about it. And if there's a hint in that, that you're like, well, I guess I want to know if I've damaged my brain, because if I have, then screw it. I'm just going to keep drinking. I want you to understand that any damage that happens is on a spectrum. So even if there was an impact to how your brain is working now and it need it needs to heal and it can heal, but even you know, the more that you drink or the more that you go into that behavior, the further down the spectrum the brain will go. So I guess I'd really explore just the thought. I'm always so curious about thoughts and what is that thought giving you? How does it make you feel? How does it make you behave? And then what is a better thought? Obviously I've offered you a few here in terms of the fact that yeah, scientifically the brain can heal. It does heal in most all cases it is healing and you know, it's all good news. But I would also just say, like, what other thoughts could you could you think? Uh, maybe one is that no matter what I've done to my brain, today's a new day, and every day and every moment, I'm either building up my brain and my body, or I'm tearing it down. And what decisions do I want to make in this moment to either build up or tear down? And really considering, you know, the impact of your thinking around this, because sometimes we do think that the worry is very merited and it feels intense. It feels strong, but I always like to question like, why am I worrying in the first place? What is it giving me? And how can I get that thing, whether it's a level of self-concern or a level of caution around alcohol, how can I get it with a more empowering thought that doesn't have kind of the dark side of, well, if I've already screwed up my brain, then screw it. I'm going to just keep drinking, which is, I think, the dark side of this specific thought. So I went a little meta there for a moment. But the bottom line is, in the shortest nutshell, is that you did not damage your brain permanently from everything I've known and everything I've seen. The brain recovers in a beautiful, beautiful way. Our bodies are miraculous, and it is really, truly all good news. So thank you again. And if you are curious about your drinking, again, please check out The Alcohol Experiment. It's totally free, always free at alcoholexperiment.com. Hey, it's Annie Grace. I want to tell you about the most important book that I never wrote, <laughs> and I mean that. This is This Naked Life. It's 48 true stories of people finding freedom from alcohol, and it's so inspiring. It's our stories, as you know from this podcast, that truly change us, that revolutionize what we believe is possible for ourselves. So it's This Naked Life. You can find it on Amazon or check it out online. Even download it 100% free at nakedlifestories.com. And every single copy that you buy, all the proceeds are 100% committed to keeping the alcohol experiment forever free for anybody who needs it. So check it out. It's such an inspirational book. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast as it truly helps the message reach somebody who might need to hear it today.